uh, I'm surprised that there aren't more methods, more models developed by now. There was a long time where everybody kind of did the same sort of thing, and then it started diverging. And only in recent years we're getting models identified, facilitative, evaluative, transformative. And there's really three or four of them that are identified as sort of mainstream models. After 25, 30 years, I think that's very few to have as methods because they don't talk alike, they don't sound alike, they, they look very, very different. But a, another fact that we know out of psychotherapy research is when you look at eight models of how to do psychotherapy, which all look incompatible with one another as beginning therapists, when you look 20, down, 20 years down the line at the practitioners of those models, they all pyramid and start looking alike in how they actually work, regardless of how they're talking. So their origins, their theoretical models, start shaping towards each other, and 20 years later, you look at them and behind a one-way mirror and you can't tell which model anybody's mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. we, I just heard this morning from some evidence of a dissertation done on mediators finding the same phenomenon, that mm -hmm. experienced practitioners transcend their models and they all operate from some basic principles that they all seem to know that the uh, inexperienced peoples don't know, people don't know. So I think that the diversion of models at the baseline isn't really important in the long run. Mm -hmm. It's important for clarifying all the principles along the way and differentiating them, pulling them apart. Mm -hmm. But what we know is that eventually they're all going to act alike and do something that connects with people and mm -hmm. helps them. Mm -hmm.